Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Gravity Circuit. In the last part, we started off the Arc Depths, the final level of the game. And it's a lengthy level, especially with the sections of the stage I showed off. But here we are now on the long haul before the final boss. Let's see what's at the core of all this, shall we? Uh, Colonel! Oh, is that you, Kai? We... we have been waiting for you. We? Uh, the Ark, it's... it's moving? Yes, it is time for us to go, Gravity Circuit. Go? Where? What are you doing with the Ark? Oh, don't tell me you've forgotten who you really are. Or our mission. Mission? Just who are you? Hm. You hurt me, Gravity Circuit. Just like all the others did, too. You didn't answer my question. Very well. I am Commander Circuit, the Tenth Circuit of this Ark. The Tenth Circuit? Indeed. Each Ark has given ten circuits to govern over our great mission. The one entrusted to us by our esteemed masters. That is, until you nine decided to abandon it all and bury me here with the Ark. So... This is all in the name of revenge? Precisely. We traveled together throughout space for many, many millennia. Claiming great many planets and shaping them to suit the needs of our masters. But once we arrived on this despicable, desolate rock, you all changed. You wanted to stay, abandon our mission. It was most illogical, absurd even. Instead of fulfilling your duty, you wanted to be worshipped by those pathetic, low-spec bots of all things. They are nothing but disposable workers, mere heaps of scrap. The Ark makes dozens of them automatically whenever we land. There is nothing special about them. They're just recycled trash. Why would you ever want or even need their worship? You even adopted common names like Kai and Cable. So you appear like benevolent masters to them. The Guardian Corps, <laughs> it's all a sham, absolutely disgusting. You simply wanted glory when our masters ignored you. All because you failed your duty. And worse yet, you modified the common bots to suppress my powers. Took me a fair while to hack and control this fool over here. But no matter, once the Ark is in orbit, we can put this all behind us. Those pretty bots will deactivate, leading them to collect dust. What? Deactivate? All of them? The Ark, my body, maintains a planet-wide signal. Without it, common bots fall into sleep mode to await the arrival of our masters. And that's why you chose to bury me, to prevent the inevitable. But in your lunacy, you forgot to turn off my subsystems, allowing me to use my bot creation facilities without interference. Biding my time, I amassed an army of my own, to destroy what you had built. With the element of surprise on my side, I was able to pick you out one by one. Soon, I had all circuits in my hands, except for one. You, you wretched gravity circuits. Even in defeat, your abilities allowed you to constantly escape my grasp. Eventually, I ran out of my soldiers to send after you. So, I had to rebuild my army. But this time, I brainwashed the other circuits to be on my side. They didn't obey my orders to find and bring you in, but no matter. With this bot's help, I could lure you in here. Wait, lure me in? You wanted me to come here? Yes, I need your circuit, as per our programmed protocol. The Ark cannot take off to space without all circuits present. How lucky of you that you came here of your own accord. You couldn't have made this any easier for me. 
No, you can't do this. Oh, you still dare to oppose our great mission? Very well. I'll let this fool take care of you while I plot a course out of this system. Kai, I will obey. Help. Colonel, you must fight his influence. I'm sorry. You will obey our masters. I can't... Forgive me! You, you will be stopped here, Kai. First boss of the final boss gauntlet is Colonel himself, who is surprisingly is a capable fighter despite anything you might have thought about him during the main story up to this point. He can run at you, and if he does that, he'll try to grab you, and if that hits, he does his own version of the Heavenly Pile Drive on you, which can do some decent damage. He can punch at you, he can jump and create a shockwave, and he can also spin around in a circle. At about the halfway point of the fight, he doesn't get new attacks, but the commander circuit in the background will generate a shield for him here and again, while also reducing the size of the overall arena. This fight can be surprisingly dangerous, but it is only phase one, so it's meant to be more a potential resource drain than anything. Also watch out for his shield, it does have a surprising amount of health, it's not a one-shot go like a lot of shields are in games like this. Thank you, Kai, for stopping me. Colonel, save your energy. We'll get you fixed. Oh, it's too late for me now. Please, stop the commander. Colonel, no. Very impressive. You really are as powerful as ever, Gravity Circuit. You monster. I will never forgive you! Looks like I will have to take matters into my own hands. You will not disobey the wishes of our masters! Final boss is the Commander Circuit, and between him and Colonel, you gotta go through four health bars on your own, too, so be careful here. Your best friend in this fight is the Enhancement Chip that allows you to be pulled towards your grapple target if it doesn't stun them, as that allows you to get up to two or three shots in a row with, while dodging the attacks his hands or head will ultimately send out. Speaking of attacks, though, each phase has its own unique attack set. Here in phase one, he can slam his hands on the ground, which will send a shockwave that goes in the other direction. He can fire a beam from one of his eyes directly at you, which will also create shockwaves after a second. He can spawn in a bomb that actively has like a skull on it. After a few seconds, that will detonate, sending out projectiles in the four cardinal and intracardinal directions each, though the hands can actively block that, making them a pretty safe space. Otherwise, he's got another eye beam that tracks in two arcs around the two sides of the room, hiding behind the hands is the safe spot there. Phase two is where this fight starts to get a t bit tanky, because while his core is visible, he also puts up a shield to block you from accessing it. You can either destroy that barrier by doing enough hits or by using a singular burst technique. I think probably the best thing to do there is honestly just use the burst technique and then go in for physical attacks or an extra burst attack immediately afterwards, but it's open for just long enough for you to get at least a single like shot or two in up to three damage on average. This fight takes a while for this phase more than anything else. Uh, for the most part, the changes he gets is that his attacks are now more aggressive, like when he does the two-direction lasers. He sends out four beams, so you need to really hide behind things. Uh, he'll spawn multiple bombs at once. I think the shockwaves he sends out from his eye beam or otherwise is larger and all that. It's very easy to die in this final boss, and as we just saw there, whenever you do die, you still need to fight Colonel again. They spawn in a zombie variant of him. Effectively, that's nice and purple. On my first playthrough, I died quite a bit in this final boss, and basically every death was to this phase. I think I died maybe once in the first phase because I exhausted a lot of my health during the Colonel fight, because I don't think I found every health power up on that playthrough. Phase 3, though, I don't think I've ever died to really at all off the top of my head. At this point, he actively can only physically attack you by sending homing projectiles at you. His main thing is to use his own burst technique, Virus Command, which spawns in one of four specific generic enemy types. At this point, you still have to worry with the shield on the core, but if you throw enemies into him, you lose that immediately, so you can just focus on damage. At this point, that's a victory lap. And that's game. Incomprehensible. Uh, it can't end like this. Uh. 
All I wanted was to fly through space once again. Those bright stars, beautiful nebulae, marvelous comets, with my mind and body stuck to the arc. Stargazing was all I had. Masters, forgive us. Ah, so that's what he wanted. It is true what he said about the nine of us. We were tired of shaping planets to please our masters. Truthfully, I don't know who they were. Or if they're still out there watching us. But the bots that we left behind on each planet... They were each a unique individual with their own hopes and dreams. We didn't know how they developed those traits, but... Leaving each and every one of them behind was incredibly cruel. For all I know, they all might have rusted all over and crumbled to dust. It was like we betrayed their trust time and time again. And to what end? To please some masters we never knew? We tried to take some of them aboard the Ark one time, but their bodies couldn't withstand hyper light speed travel. Us circuits can be given new bodies so long as the circuit remains. But the common bots were not so lucky. Once they are gone, they are gone. So you chose to stay? Yes. I was tired of our mission, but it was the others who decided to bury Commander Circuit here. Before I could say anything, the deed was already done. I was ashamed, scared to face him after having considered him a friend. If I had done something, then perhaps things could have turned out differently. So, what now? The other circuits may eventually need new hosts, but I think we can figure that out another time. They are safe in the Ark. However, someone's going to have to take Commander Circuit's place. If there isn't someone to wield his circuits, those bots out there will deactivate. Wait, are you going to... <laughs> Sacrifice myself for the greater good? I suppose I will. Consider it a just punishment for what I've done. This whole mess is in part my fault, after all. Will you be alright? Oh, I'm several millennia old, remember? I think I can last a little while longer. Wait, Nega? What about your gravity circuit? It should rightfully belong to you, right? Oh, that old thing. You might have originally been a common bot, but... You've earned it, Kai. It's yours. Nega? Eh. Don't get all sentimental on me now. Now go. I'm sure the others are waiting for their hero's safe return. Master Kai, sir! You did it! You stopped this monstrously huge thing! 
from, um, whatever bad thing it was trying to do. And not only that, the virus army soldiers have all stopped. We were all really worried, but you've saved us once again. You're a real hero, Master Kai, sir. Master, huh. Should I tell them everything, Mega? Should they know? Masters, circuits, the mission commander spoke of? My identity? Or what happened to Colonel? Master Kai, sir? Pat, listen. The truth about who I am is... Gravity Circuit. I absolutely love this game. If you're a Mega Man fan, I can recommend this in general, between its high-paced action, music, and genuinely great character design and boss fights. With that said, if you're specifically a fan of Mega Man Zero, especially Zero, Three, and Four, this is especially up your alley. But if you're not a fan of those, you should come in with some tempered expectations, because it definitely takes a lot after those in some very minor ways that can radically change the experience. The efforts that are in this game are so clear for their love of the genre and the games that inspired them that it's really heartwarming to see, which there's a lot of indie games like that, but given the specific games that they clear are inspired by, this is a very particular favorite of mine in that regard, because it resonates so much with me as a lover of those games as well. Uh, and I would love to see a sequel to happen at some point to iron out whatever issues I might have with this main campaign, which largely come down to better implementation for tutorials of things added in later updates so they're not just in the patch notes, which is the entire reason why I didn't know loadouts existed up to this point, as well as better implementation of those things to begin with. And I wish there was a little more character interaction because they set up all these interesting ideas for what these characters are like through talking with Nega and the other members at Guardian HQ. But... At the same time, I appreciate how brisk the game is with its story at the same time, so uh, maybe extra scenes would have been a little hampering at the same time. Could have been maybe something where maybe there was like an extra mode you could unlock after getting a certain amount of things done where you could just like see character interactions that are just written down with portraits rather than having actual cutscenes. That could have been neat. Now, we are done with the game and we're finishing at this part, but you might notice there's still about five minutes on the timestamp. The credits are over, and here's our game completion status. We're still missing two armor paints, technically one, as well as two research compendium things. We already actually have seen one of those armor paints. It's the one that we got that has Nega's color scheme that I got at the end of the last part. But there's still one more we have to go get. On top of that, New Game Plus is now available. It's the usual New Game Plus shenanigans. You start from the start of the game, but you have pretty much all the stuff you've already bought from my memory. And here we are, loading in afterwards. Welcome back, Master Kai, sir. Right there are the last two compendium discs. Those are for ourself as both the gravity circuit and in our pre-gravity circuit state. Just to showcase we've now gotten everything and to have the compendium fully unlocked, let's get those really quick. Here's the one for Colonel's boss fight, as well as the one for the commander circuit. And here is the gravity circuit and Nameless. Thank you, Gravity Circuit. With your help, the compendium is complete. I would like to offer you a reward, but I'm afraid I don't have much to offer. Pat, however, told me to mark this for you. Hopefully it'll suffice. And that's an achievement. Next up, let's showcase something I actively learned about while recording footage for this LP. Namely, if you talk to the nurse at any point in the game, there's a cheat code you can enter that actively allows you to see something kind of neat about the game's development. If you input the good old Konami code, up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, and then the burst button instead of start, you will swap from their current dialogue portraits to ones used earlier in development, namely a beta. I actually like the one for the nurse here a lot. Kai's definitely a little scuffed looking, though. And now there's only one thing left to talk about, and that's the boss refight station. At this point in the game, we fought every boss, so every boss is available for it to begin with, but also you can access the two gauntlets, the full and shuffled gauntlet. Full gauntlet is every boss in a set order, shuffled gauntlet's every boss in a random order. 
With that said, there's one last collectible to get, and it requires either beating one of the gauntlets or 13 of the individual fights. So let's get a more traditional boss rush in here, why don't we? Hit the music! And for doing either of those, a new pallet ship will spawn in. Congratulations, Gravity Circuit. You have cleared every simulation recorded in the combat memory bank. To commemorate this feat, we are granting you a pallet ship. Feel free to make use of it and further hone your skills. We hope you find our gift useful. This was added in a later update, of course, because I don't believe this particular room was in the game at launch. But the 11th pallet ship is far and away the best one. Because what it does is that it combines every single other pallet ship's abilities together while also giving you the original color scheme you started the game with. For new game plus and circuit mode and hard mode alike, this is your best friend. It's so useful. My goodness, your help has truly inspired me, Gravity Circuit. Unfortunately, I don't have anything special to give you, even if that one blue fellow tried to convince me otherwise. No matter, you still have my deepest gratitudes. Any future paint jobs are on the house. It's really neat. And now we go back to the game completion screen. At this point, we now have 100% on everything. That's pretty much everything the game has to offer, barring the harder modes, as well as the master levels. That neat little ending bit was added in a future update. You get that for either beating the game and getting the Everyone Is Here achievement, or by beating the game with one of the modifiers from the start menu. But with that, I'm going to need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, have a great night, take care, and I'll see you guys next Let's Play, whatever that may be. See you guys, then.